All right, don't be mad at me. I know it's been a while since I've been doing any work on Mona Lisa, aka the 85 Monte Carlo. Um, but it's time to get back on it. I had to take a little bit of little break away from it. One, I was doing some work with the PT, still working on that. But two, just had to clear my mind on it, step away from it a little bit, and then get a little motivation to get back to it. I know a bunch of people have been hitting me up asking about the money content. Getting back on it. So, one thing that, um, well, I think this might be the first or second look with the hood closed. It's not latched or anything, but it's closed on the Monty. So, I'm digging how it looks. Wiped it down last night. It is a satin finish. So, you really can't use anything that's going to add shine to it, like anything with wax. So, there's a spray bottle I have and just spread on microfiber and wipe it down but it's looking pretty good there are some flaws in the bodywork but for the most part I like it and I'm debating because I pointed out that when I throw the intercooler in here that the original latch probably won't work so I've been looking up and I think I'm gonna do uh, I'm kind of leaning towards hood pins so I like the latch style, so one there, one on the other side, but that's going to come at a little later date once I get all the turbo stuff situated. My buddy still has the, the driver's side header. I'm looking at the thermostat replacements, but in the meantime, I have all the uh, fuel system stuff laid out, so I'm not sure how much I'm going to get done today. But as far as the day goes, I'm going to throw the fuel rails on. Just got the mount for the fuel regulator. So I might get all that mocked up into place. So the mount and then the fuel regulator. Get that mounted into place. I think I have dash 8 hose. So that's PTFE line. And then dash 6. So the dash 6 I'm going to use for return. The dash 8 I'm going to use for feed. I have a whole bunch of different fittings and everything from hot rod fuel hose so that's all there I did say they sent me some of these um, this is my third kit from them I think the first kit was on the Elko second kit was dash six lines but then looking in looking into it some more um, with the turbo and everything I decided to step up the fuel line so that's why I ordered the third kit which is the dash eight so that'll be the feed. The dash six will work for the return. That's the same thing I have on the um, fuel pressure regulator. So the inlets will be dash eight. The return is a dash six. So have all that stuff there. I think the mount for the uh, regulator goes on these two upper bolts here. So should have enough room to get the bolts out, hopefully. I'll take the water pump off, but it'll sit here, and the regulator will sit right under the throttle body. I'll probably run the return line straight under the intake, and then wrap it around the firewall. Same thing with the feed lines. Might run them up, run them up the firewall, then run them over, and then they'll split off into a Y in the back. So one will go to the driver's side, one will go to the passenger side rail. Then they'll go into the fuel pressure regulator, and then the return will just go back down the middle. So that's the plan. Do have a 450 uh, liter per hour fuel pump, so I'll use that. I'm not planning on running E85 right now, so I didn't do a E85 sensor. It's going to be pump gas, so I didn't have to go with like a dual pump setup or anything crazy so that should be enough for now think about using the stock sending unit so this i will end up cutting these little ends off of the vent in the return i think the feed line i have an adapter for it so it should just go onto that nut already and just close that up for the feed and then it'll be an a in line on top of that where these two I'll cut the tips off and then um, I know some people hate on them but I'll use a compression fitting for the return and the vent 
I'm not doing huge horsepower numbers with this, so um, the compression fitting should be fine. Um, if not, later on down the road, if I do notice problems with it, I'll get a new sending unit and replace it. But for now, everything should work. I've used, like I said, I've used this company before on the, uh, on the El Camino and they go together just fine no problems uh, AN fittings the kits come with a whole bunch, whole bunch of um, connectors so there's all types of fittings I, said, I ordered a few extra compression fittings originally I had the um, returnless dial that uses a Corvette um, regulator but with the setup I'm going with that's going not going to be enough um, fuel pressure eventually so that's why this one's adjustable and then it runs off a vacuum so with boost I think it's a one to one ratio so one pound of boost will give it one more pound of um, fuel pressure but I'll, since I have it I will go over the setups with these on there and the differences once I do it might end up uh, giving this to grind school along with the other fuel pump for his setup to make it nice and easy for him. But that's pretty much the only difference is I did order that kit originally. I said it comes with everything you need, even the fuel rail connectors and all that. But I'm not using the Corvette style uh, filter and regulator. I'm going with the different style. And then the original fuel pump I got from my buddy. I think that's a 255. So that one, I'm not using that one either. Uh, so step that one up. I will use this uh, wiring harness. I guess it's supposed to be a higher output. So it's designed for, I think, the Grand Nationals or the Regals. But I think it, it should be able to work with it. It just... Uh, I think it runs off straight from the alternator to the fuel tank or the sending unit to help increase the voltage to it. So that's the plan. I'm going to stop talking. Just look at it and I've been talking way longer than I thought. But I'll put it down. I'll get the fuel rails on today. And maybe I'll get the fuel rails and the regulator on. And I'll cut you guys back on. The next time it will probably be running some of the fuel lines so we'll see i might be a couple connectors short from what i plan on doing but it'll be all right i'll, I'll figure it out if i need to order more fittings i can it's no problem and we'll go from there but till then i might even mock up the manual brake kit or at least open that up or make it its own i'll probably make it its own video because i think i will have to bend those brake lines back a little bit to get everything to line up but let me go ahead and throw these fuel rails on i still don't have my injectors yet so i had to throw these on just to get everything mocked up get the regulator mocked up in place and then i'll cut you guys back on from there all right so as far as these fuel rails go you know, it'd be a lot nicer if the Jags logo wasn't on there, but at the same time, you're gonna see it anyway. I could flip them the other way, but I think I'm gonna run them so it looks more uniform that way. There's three tie downs or three bolts back here. I don't know why it's so dark, <laughs> but there's just three bolts for uh, this hardware here and some Allen screws. So I'm going to throw a Loctite on these and just get those nice and snug. And as far as these other ones, I think I'm just going to run these, throw it straight through. And then on the back side, the crush washer and then the bolt. I could look up and see if there's torque specs on it. If there are, I'll throw them on the screen. If not, I'll just get them nice and snug. Or this one, I might just get it nice and snug for now because they will come out eventually when I get the injectors. But I just want to mock these up into place, so it might just be hand tight for now. These ones, I'll probably tighten all the way. But as far as these bolts, 
I'll just get hand tight. And then same thing with the fuel pressure regulator. Once I throw this on, I'll throw Loctite on these bolts back here. I don't think these, uh, well, I could probably throw the fitting in for the return. There's ones on the side, really don't matter for now. But just a quick mock up and so. It'll sit right, right about there. So plenty of clearance. It might be a little tight for the gauge I have, but I'll see if the gauge will clear. If not, I just won't run it with, with the gauge. Well, with the mechanical gauge there. I think what I have is um I have a fuel pressure gauge that I might throw on one of the rails. If not, just throw it closer to the regulator. Maybe coming off of this rail here or the other side. And it'll just be a, a sensor. And it'll just read it from that and it'll pop up on the dash or the little handheld that the Holly comes with. So if the mechanical gauge doesn't clear, which it should, it's only about like that tall. So we'll see, but We'll mock this up and cut you guys back on after the fuel rails are installed and the fuel pressure regulator. All right, give you guys a quick update. Fuel rails are just, they're on there, but just loosely. Um, I'll come back and tighten everything up once I get all the lines ran and cut, but I am missing a couple um, connectors or fittings. So on the fuel pressure regulator, I'll probably run the 180s. So you see a lot of people, instead of taking it from this fuel rail directly to this side of the regulator, they'll pretty much crisscross it to the other side. So I need to get some eight or some dash eight, uh, one, 180 degree fittings. So a loop around and just cross it to the other side. And then this one will cross over to the other side. But with this, with the fuel rails, when you look up online, they say dash eight orbs. So this end is dash eight, but they come with dash six. And since I thought they were dash eight orbs, uh, I assumed that they were going to be dash eight. So they're dash six. So I'm going to have to order some dash eight orbs with the dash eight fittings or ends on there. So that I'm not having to put a step up bit here or step up fitting here from dash six to dash eight. I just want to run it dash eight all the way. So it'll be dash eight coming out of here. Probably go into a 90 and then into that 180 and cross to the other side. So it says dash eight orbs, but they're dash six. So keep that in mind. With me, I want to run all the feed lines dash eight. So I'll have to update or upgrade these. And this compressor fitting didn't work on the return line that I'm going to use, but the vent line, the compression fitting fit, I ran a different style, kind of like the ones you run on the, or the intake with the stock of fuel lines. So I ran that style because there's a little ridge on this. Well, this is the vent tube for now, but it will be the return line because it's a little thicker. So I ran that style. I did have to cut the edges off or just the tips off of these two lines. So that's what I did. Cut those off. Try to use a tube cutter. I wasn't able to get it. So just broke off the cutoff wheel. Gave them a nice clean cut. Cleaned it up with some files. So that's what I did with those. These top two, you got to keep in mind that originally they're real close together. So if you're going to do it this way, you got to spread these out just a little bit. If you slightly just bend that one outward, it'll work just fine. With this one, however, that middle one is the stock return line. So I'll go in this tube right here. But I'm, it, get, it's, it goes like that to get the fuel all the way to the bottom of the tank instead of splashing on top. But what I'm going to do, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm still debating because I think it's the same diameter. 
Um, this one might be slightly bigger, the vent line. What I could do, which there might be enough sticking out of the bottom, you could cut this little cap off here. Just put a rubber hose that will drop down all the way to the bottom. That's what I think I did with the El Camino, but I think it's a little different. It has a little bit more uh, material there, and then it has like a little vent thing that hangs here. So if you break that vent off and then run a rubber hose all the way down, I think that's what I did. And then you take the, if you're going to use the return as a vent, you just cut a little hole or drill a little hole in there so that it's not... Get, it's not having a bunch of gas or trying to vent from the bottom. There's a relief cut up here or a hole, and it'll just vent from there. So that's what I might do. I think I may, should be able to cut this cap off right here. Put a rubber hose and a clamp there. And it should be good for the return. These lines or these wires. I'll probably upgrade them slightly. But for the most part, that's how I did that. Fuel pressure regulators on, the fuel rails are on. I'll have to get some more fittings. And then that was the old fuel pump. So compared to the new one, it's not too much bigger, but I think that you have to modify the base a little bit. So if I have to cut that base up a little bit to hold it no problem but I'll figure it out like I said people do this all the time so it's not it's not a big deal the 255 would have been a direct drop in but the base on the 450 is a little bit bigger so yeah I'll have to figure that out but as far as the other connectors like I said that's the why for it. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these 45 and 90s, but I just threw it up there to see. I'm going to run the feed line up however it runs. I don't want to get it too close to the dump pipe. If I could tuck it inside here somewhere, and then probably just mount it up against here, up against the firewall, and then just Y it off there. And then these will just obviously run into each fuel line or fuel rail and we'll go with that if i get up a little bit higher to try to hide it a little bit i will but we'll we'll see when it comes down to it where i want it but we'll see It'd be nice if i could just route it behind here but i don't know how much how close i want it to the actual block and then i gotta keep in mind of the dump tube for the turbo and our right, downpipe so we'll, we'll see <laughs> i'll probably order a couple or a few more 90 degrees because i think i only have two of the dash 890s which i'll probably run up on the fuel rails so probably two 90s two 180s these i don't know they might be 90s also or 45s so I'll have to order probably six seven more fittings and then I have to think about how it's gonna come off of the gas tank so I probably needed quite a bit more fittings to be honest but it's no biggie I'll reach out to the company and either order them or see if they want to do something because like I said this is the third kit I've ordered from them and next will just be a whole bunch of fittings, so we'll see. Other than that, can't think of too much. Besides those, like I said, the middle one's a compression fitting. That one's just, oh, I have my AN wrench, but didn't use it on that one, so got a little chipped. Um, this one is not a compression fitting it just goes onto the previous threads are there I didn't feel like cutting it and reflaring it so I found that style there's an o-ring on the original pipe or yeah tube and those are the sizes right there 
So it's a, just a female adapter fitting. Uh, it's a dash six, but I have a step up for a dash eight. I can't find one for dash eight by 16 millimeter by 150. So yeah, that's what I went with. Uh, it'd be a pretty much a dash six coming off and they'll step right up to a dash eight. So not too worried about it. Let's say if I was going for higher horsepower, I'd probably just get a whole different sending unit. But this should be this should be fine. I think that's the dash six to dash eight adapter, so that's pretty much what I'll throw on there. Yeah, so I'll throw that on there and then just run the hose from there. But that's all I have for now. Like I said, I just want to get some content back out so <laughs> you guys could see more on the Monte Carlo, aka Mona Lisa. But it's it's getting there. A few more tweaks, uh, a few more fittings. I, I've been lazy. I haven't ordered the any of the wiring yet. Another Holly's back order for like a month, month and a half. Uh, other than that, uh, I think I'll call Painless and see which kit they recommend for their wiring harness. And we'll go from there. But this is the start on the fuel system. After that, or once I start running all the lines, that'll be another one. And then the manual brake kit. Like I said, I still haven't. So I haven't even opened it from the packaging, so we'll get that to work also. That'll probably be after the fuel system. Um, if, you're not, if anybody needs a crossover line, dash six. So I got one. I won't use it, but it's there. But yeah, just getting started on the fuel system for the money.